for your blessings on me. This morning, some scripture we're reading from is found in uh, 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter and the 18th verse. Listen, thanksgiving is like a magnet. It draws God's attention to us. That magnet draws us. Have you you've seen a magnet? You see how it'll pull something to it pretty quick? You know, there are people in your life that you're drawn to be around. There's people that comes into a room that will light up the room. There are other people that comes into the room and total darkness starts to shine and you want to go out the other way. But I want to tell you something. What, what Thanksgiving does, it's like a magnet. When we have a thankful heart, it draws. I remember a guy that that used to be pretty special to me. I worked with, Fred's worked with him, and Michelle and different ones that's worked at the electric company. His name is Glenn Beard. And I just want to, this morning, I really want to call him and tell him thank you because he's been on my mind the last few weeks about uh, his attitude and about who he is. Glenn, I don't know if he ever went to church a whole lot or not, but I did know that everybody at the electric company loved Glenn Beard. He was the nicest fellow. He never had a negative word to say about anyone. And when people were sitting around in their little groups and they were grunting and complaining about the company and people or, or somebody or whatever, Glenn never chimed in. He didn't chime in and start agging it on or anything like that. He would possibly get up and walk out gently like, but he wouldn't do nothing, say nothing to offend anyone because, you see, that wasn't drawing him. It wasn't a magnet of him. His thankful heart that he had, his attitude of gratitude that he had, it didn't draw him into that negative conversation. It, it, it didn't at all. So therefore, he was able to just move away from that. But you see what I'm saying? A thankful heart, people are drawn to that. When somebody has a thankful heart, uh, it, it's like a magnet that draws God's attention to us and it brings good things to us. One of the saddest things that can happen to a Christian is to lose, listen Christian folks, I'm talking to you, is to lose your thankful heart. Are you hearing me today? You're saying, Pastor, uh, when I'm a Christian or if I become a Christian, that it's a possibility that I can lose my thankful heart. Yes, I am. I'm telling you that you can. And the next thing you can do is you can walk away from God if you're not careful, if you don't nurture what you've got, what you've been given. God has given you the Spirit of the living God. Jesus left that Holy Spirit to dwell and live in you and to help you through your difficulties of this fleshful body in this world. And the church of the Nazarene are strong in talking about entire sanctification. Being filled. My cup. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up, Lord. Let it run over, Lord. Because when my cup is filled, it has no room for the junk. Of, of life to come into that cup. And that's why they talk about that. The same thing, though, guys, the entire sanctification, being filled with the Spirit, uh, all of those things, the same thing. It's just it's saying, you know what? I'm sold out to Jesus because with Jesus, I know that I can make a way. I know that He will make a way for me. He will help me in this fleshful body to get over it. To, to look at what is really important in life. It took a lot. Because, you see, I've been in that negative attitude before. I've stepped off into those conversations before that I've just talked about. But I want to tell you something. I don't like it. But then along comes a sickness and a tri trouble and a trauma in our family. And now I go to thinking about all those little things that just really tore my life and pulled me uh, so far away sometimes it felt like from God because I was so drawn to want to know what, what happened. What do you mean? What's he doing now? You're kidding me. And all of that. You see, you know where I'm at. Every one of you do. But I'm telling you, though, when I realize there are some things in life that is so horrific, it's so terrible and hard to deal with, and some things we can't do a thing about, we just got to put it in the hands of God. And that's our life. We've got to put our lives in the hand of God, and then we've got to nurture what we've got. You see, it's not over. It's not over yet. Listen, it's not over yet. God has not come back. 
and split the eastern skies. It's not over till it's over. And until then, my heart's going to go on singing. Until then, with joy, I'm going to carry on. Because I'm trusting a God that said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'm trusting a God that said, I'll go with you through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm trusting a God that said, He's bigger than what's the matter. Because He is. If you believe it, say amen. Glory to God. Let's read that, First Thess 5 and 18, and see what it says. It says this, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Some circumstances in my life I have a little struggle with giving thanks for, but I have to realize that God's got this. It's in His hands. He's, he's the Creator. He's the Maker. He's the Way. He's the Truth in everything. I've got to give thanks. Second Timothy, the third chapter, uh, reading in that first verse, it says this, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, uh, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power. It's power. You know, a form of godliness. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. And then, you know, that is that a form of godliness? I want to walk the straight and narrow way, but I'm denying that power. Well, I don't know about all that power stuff. Well, you know, I know about it because Jesus said to His disciples, I'm not leaving you without something to go with you. I'm not leaving you comfortless. I'm going to leave you the comforter, which is the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. When you give your heart to Jesus, guess what? The Spirit of the living God starts coming into your heart in you, and then it's dwelling within you wherever you go, and then it helps clean you up. It'll help you, your mindset, to start cleaning it up. And getting it straight. God is here for us. Now, are we living in some of these times that you, we just read this scripture? Are you, you heard all of those things in the last days. So does anybody think this could be the last days that we're living here on this earth? It could be. We never know what could happen the next minute. Preachers are not going to talk about that because they don't want to scare you. That it might scare the children. It might scare the people. Honey, I'd rather to scare you to death than you to burn to death. I'm telling you, that's just flat out speaking, but I'm thinking the younger generation as well as the older generation is tired of the mealy mouth word trying to be preached and not really preaching the Word of God. And listen, I love all the churches. I love the churches around us, and I pray for them because, you see, I understand this. I was listening the other day to a church on the radio, and it's a local radio station. I think it's uh, West End Church of Christ. And I thought when he got through speaking, I thought, my goodness, brother, bless your heart. You have just brought the Word of God. You have just delivered it so clear and so that we can understand it. And I thank you. I thank God for you. And I began to pray for them and pray for their church. We must pray for one another. Listen, Psalms 104 tells us this. It says, enter His gates with thanksgiving. A little bit small writing here, y'all. You may not see it, but I'm going to read it to you. And in His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. You see, He's eager for us to praise Him and to give Him thanks. He deserves all of our praise. The attitude of gratitude, it leads us into God's presence. When we begin to praise God, I want to tell you, you'll step right into His presence. That's why when you see us begin to worship and begin to praise God, you can feel something happening just a little bit different going on, don't you? Yeah, that's the presence of God. You see, that's the attitude of gratitude. That's the thankfulness in the heart that creates a place for God's presence and God's provision. Jesus said to the one thankful leper, He said, Your faith has made you whole. Praise always goes ahead of blessings. Praise prepares the heart for the promise. Well, we know the Scripture, what it says, that, that we must always give God the thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We must guard our hearts. we got to guard that heart against 
a spirit of ingratitude. Because you see, the spirit of ingratitude will slip upon you before you know it. And the next thing you know it, you've got a negative spirit that's coming about you. We don't want that. We don't need that. We've got to guard ourselves. We must arm ourselves with the attitude of thankfulness, of gratitude. Many of God's people have lost the presence of God in their life. They've lost their joy. They've lost their peace. There's no sense of victory in their lives. It seems that the glory of God has departed from them. They feel like a victim to everything life throws at them. It all started with losing that attitude of gratitude. We must never look, church, we must never look at the church as any other building or look at the Bible, the Word of God, the instruction book that gives us strength as any other book. Think of gospel songs, any type of songs. I don't care, contemporary uh, uh, hymns, whatever we're singing. To God be the glory. Lift Him up. All the songs are important when we praise God. I was telling somebody the other day, I went to a concert uh, in Nashville and, and, and I they were stood up the whole time, y'all. I'm an old dude. I'm getting older. I'll be 39 tomorrow. I go in that concert and it's packed with 15, 16,000 people and, and look, they're all standing on their feet and their arms are stretched up and they're trying to touch the, the top ceiling if they can, it looks like to me. And I'm sitting here thinking, as I'm standing there, I'm thinking, are they going to stand up the whole time? Lord, hell, this is hot. And then I sat down and let them stand up and just grin a little bit. And then I got to looking around as I set my old rear end down and all those... That's all right to say that. Brenda, Brenda, hopefully she won't watch that. As I set myself down and said, I can take this. Y'all go ahead and stand all you want to. And I'm looking in people's backs and all around me and I'm thinking it's hot. I can't get my breath. And, and I look around and then all of a sudden it comes to me. You big dummy. These people here are standing all over this place. There are young people all over this place. And they've got those hands lifted to the ceiling. And they're praising God. And they're lifting Him up. And they're singing right along with every song that's been put up there. And it's just a driving. And it's going across strong, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, get your rear end up and praise you some Jesus, boy. And I just stood right up with them because, you see, goodness gracious alive, y'all. It is awesome to serve a God that loves us so much. And it's... Boy, I could stand for for two hours and praise Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. He's looking for our praise. He's looking for our thanksgiving and our thankful hearts. We don't want to lose that attitude of gratitude. Oh, listen, any time the children of Israel, you remember that story in Moses, the children of Israel, when they... they uh, lost their attitude of gratitude. They began to grumble and all of a sudden they began to complain. They'd been brought out of slavery, but no. Now they started grumbling and complaining and it cost them a great lot when they did that. And it was because they did this, they began to doubt and distrust God. Folks, if we're mummering and grumbling and complaining all the time, the bottom line is we have lost the attitude of gratitude. And it is because we have developed a distrust in God's faithfulness and love for us. Listen today. If that's happened to us today, let's ask forgiveness to God. Let's ask God's forgiveness today of this distrust and accusing mind against God. Because you see, He says He wants to restore us. He will restore the attitude of thankfulness and gratitude in your life. Then joy will fill your life. And as Nehemiah 8 and 10 tells us, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I want to tell you something today. I'm closing with that. But I want to say this to you. Man, we've got so much to be thankful for. And that's why I'm saying, if you have an opportunity to be with your family this week, and some of them's a little difficult, don't let that bother you. Get over it. And if it's bothering you, the thing you do is you kind of gently, not smart aleckly, and is that a word, smart aleckly? Not smart aleckly, slip away 
and walk into another room. And you say, well, I, it's cold. I don't go outside. Well, go in the bathroom and shut the door. And then I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to say, get over it. Now remember, that's your word for Thanksgiving. Go in the bathroom if it's bothering you. Close the door gently and say, get over it. Now, I don't mean for you to go in the bathroom and close the door and say, get over it! So they can hear you, right? No! Listen, God wants us to be peaceful people. It's not worth it, y'all. It's your family. Look, yeah, they may have some difficulties, but man, we don't live in their shoes. And we, you know, and they may not be where we're at. And sometimes people that haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the struggle is this. They don't understand sometimes. And sometimes if you're not careful, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and that's all you want to talk about, and you're cramming it down their throat and, act, and nearly acting like you're better than them, that's not good either. Look, all you've got to do is just be good to people. Just smile. Get over it. And if it starts getting too rough, start humming amazing grace. Look at your phone. You've always got Facebook that you can look at or something that you can go on and look at. You understand what I'm saying? All right, look here. Let me let me ask you. We're closing, I promise. You should do me a favor. If you go into your you're struggling. Less, it's a, the, you got a little struggle and, and you're thinking, oh, let me ease up out of here. And you go into the bathroom, you shut the door, you're going to look in the mirror, and you're going to say, what? Some of you got it. I want to tell you, you're going to have a happy Thanksgiving if you'll do that. All right? All right, now in the next step, here, you've learned stuff today. The next thing is this. Now, you that have cell phones, I want you to take your cell phone out. Come on. It's got a cell phone. It's all right. Take it out. Oh, yeah. You're getting it. You're getting it. Now, I want you to take your cell phone out, and, and now somebody is really getting on your nerves, and you can't get away from them at all. You've got your cell phone out, and you're looking at it. You may not be doing nothing but looking at the icons. Is that what they're called? Oh, they call something else. But anyway, you're looking at them, whatever them things are. You're looking at that, and, and they're just about to cause you to say something. That's right. We've got to practice this. Ready? Start humming Amazing Grace. You can do all four verses if you have to. God is here. He's available. He's able. And I'm so thankful to know that He is our God and He wants to make a way. God will make a way. He is a way maker and He loves every person in this house. Listen, He loves this little young lady right here. You know why He loves her so much? God made a way to speak to her heart through the precious power of the Holy Spirit and she gave her heart to Jesus a couple weeks ago and she told me, she said, I want to be baptized. And I said, you tell me the date and it's on. I want to tell you something. That is the joy. And that is, could it be any better Thanksgiving today than this sweetheart coming and being baptized? I want her to come right now. Family.